Guten Tag, John. Hello, welcome. I'm breaking down the Moonraker's Titan Kickstarter. Um, you can get the base game from this Kickstarter, though, I believe. Uh, one expansion. The Platinum Edition is a choice. So, um, there you go. That is a choice. You can get the base game there. And uh, I'm just going to break down the Kickstarter here. Uh, I guess... We may as well kind of watch this video. The Titan Campaign is the natural evolution of the Moonraker's universe. We've spent the last three years listening to all the amazing praise and thoughtful critiques in order to craft the future of this deck building and negotiation game. Our Discord community has been playtesting these expansions for over a year, and we are beyond excited to share them with the world. Binding Ties provides a lot more structure and strategy to the negotiation aspects of Moonrakers with faction reputation. Overload supercharges the deck building, adding seven new advanced action cards, two new contract types, and literally doubling the amount of crew and ship parts in the game. Nomad introduces the navigation board, allowing players to explore the Moonraker solar system to find contracts that fit their strengths. It also adds global events, which present new challenges, give rewards, and even alter the rules. This be a lot of fun In addition too. to the expansions, we've got a ton of new add-ons. We've got metal everything, a negotiation board, a micro expansion called Endless, and a holographic card pack that is exclusive to this campaign. If that's not enough, alongside the Titan campaign, we've also launched Luminor, a fully cooperative game mode that gives owners of Moonrakers an entirely new way to play, completely free. Download it today on Itch and on Steam on July 23rd. And of course, we've got the Titan box to hold it all. Thanks for checking out our campaign. We hope you enjoy all of the love that we've put into this game. Yeah, so um, that was a breakdown of things here uh, that they're offering, which is really cool. Uh, even the frickin' negotiation board in TTS, that's when they first put that in, is in the TTS mod. Game changer, man. It it just it makes it streamlines negotiation much easier because you know you'd be like, oh, I forgot to, what was what version of the deal are we on? Um, you know, let's see, establish that much easier. Uh, so I guess I have a live stream going on if you want to watch that, but I'm kind of spreading this to my few viewers here. Uh, I suppose. So what is Titan? It, we kind of talked about this already. So it's Binding Ties, Overload, Nomad. And there are three expansions. Um, Luminor is also part of this, but that's free. You can get on Steam in like four days. Uh, it's already available on itch.io. Uh, I think the Steam version updates automatically, but um, what's nice is I, I've been running, you know, the itch.io version runs fine. You know, it's just an executable on your computer. And um, I'll stream that on Discord while I play TTS uh, with my friends. And that way they can, they, you know, to put me up on second monitor on their phone, whatever, so they can follow along too. Um, so you don't even need to be in person for to get the most out of this. Uh, yeah, so it it's a lot of fun. Um, would recommend, especially for solo and uh, two player mode, uh, and which is the only ways I played right now. But I'm I can't wait to play it with um, more buddies. Holographic card pack. Uh, you know, it's kind of obvious, but that does free if you pledge $99 or or more. So uh, if you're looking to get the base game and the add-ons, hey, guess what? You get that holographic card pack. The Endless and other add-ons. Um, so I guess that's kind of a cross-universe thing. Uh, all right, and so that's the Titan box. And you get free Moromata. That's holographic for pledging within the first 48 hours. So I'm excited for that. Um, Moromata is just objectively great, you know, um, the game, you know, when you're playing cards, you need to play to meet requirements such as thrusters, reactors, shields, damage, or, which one did I miss? Thrusters, reactors, shields, damage. Is that it? That's it. Oh, a crew. Ha! <laughs> yeah, right, looking right at it. Crew. Um, so Moromata counts as a crew, and then in addition, subtracts two from any one requirement. And crew requirements are always hard to get because you have to buy them or get them through um, upgrades or uh, contract rewards. So Moromata, very good. Probably if she's out on the board, she'll be played. Um, 
Discord, Luminor, I already talked about Luminor, the holographic stretch goals, a new holographic card added for every $25,000 raised. Well, uh, they're already at half a million, so that's, uh, I can't do math, 20. So, um, uh, so right now they're doing active showdowns. I vote Bill, um, Bill Bendo. He is one of the best, in my opinion. Uh, only two credits for a lot of goodness. So, um, they also have these stretch goals here. Uh, their social goals here. So, I'm gonna doubt make a TikTok account finally and follow them. I'm going to do Luminor. Uh, I already did Luminor, I guess. I, I joined their Discord. I guess I gotta follow them on YouTube and Instagram. And I think I already follow them on Instagram. Um, and yeah, just gotta make sure that happens there. All right, so why play Moonrakers? You know, short-term alliances. Yes, you know, you're basically you're working with buddies. Um, you know, each one, you know, trying like, what have you done for me lately? What can you do for me now? Type perspective. Um, entirely replayable. That is very true. Um, and it's only going to get even more replayable with the expansions here. Uh, so I play this a, a lot, even just by myself. Um, heading into Luminor. Luminor has been, you know, great and it's been a lot of fun to give like, a little more structure to the game. Um, uh, but, you know, you do miss out on like those, the contracts and uh, the objective cards when playing Luminor because it is a co-op mode rather than a uh, competitive mode. It's close games. This is incredibly true. I can't say how often people are like, wow, that's a close game. Um, or like, man, that game was incredibly close. Like, it pretty much happens every time we play Moonrakers, and that, that sounds like it's embellishment. That sounds like a lie. Uh, that's not true. Generally, if someone's in first, they actually won't win um, because people stop working with them over time um, as they, you know, approach that 10 prestige mark. And so, you know, when there are other people working together, or and then when that person, you know, is trying to start soloing contracts, that encourages a little more collaboration from the people lagging behind. And then generally someone will shoot out, you know, complete a contract, get to nine thing, uh, objective card um, points or prestige points, and then flip an objective card, um, basically saying, hey, yeah, guess what? I completed this mission, uh, this objective while we were doing our thing. So looks like I win. Um, and, and everyone's like, oh, darn it. Cause you know, every, it, everyone was within, you know, two points of winning. So um, that's just a trait of the game. It's not a lie, and that's something that that's one of the most remarkable things about the game. Um, I will have to say, uh, the nature of the deck building though is that you know sometimes people will be close in score without actually being close in competition. So you have to make sure you're you're in the first category and not the second one when you're playing. Make sure you can solo contracts because at the end of the day, like unless you have that you know trap card objective card, which is hit or miss, um, and someone's willing to work with you to get up to nine points, uh, you're generally best off to um, building a deck that can solo contracts, uh, and then you can go it alone, so to speak, on your final uh, attempt. Um, the quality components, this is incredibly true. These are um, amazing card quality. Um, honestly, it's I'm kind of a little afraid I, I might be getting gypped in some of my other, uh, I'm not sure if that's a PC word or not, but getting uh, ripped off or, you know, kind of oversold on some things because of my, this is my first ever Kickstarter I did was the original Moonrakers. Um, and I've since done other Kickstarters, just haven't reaped the rewards yet. So I'm a little nervous trying to, you know, coming back and seeing the parts quality because I have played other board games with much lower quality parts uh, since I got Moonrakers. And I'm like, man, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm a little nervous for those new game, other games, but um, I do have to say these card, the the coins are especially cool. Like the, they're like legitimate coins. Like you could, if you built like an empire, you could use these things, you know, to represent your currency. Um, so that's that's one really cool thing about the coins. And yeah. So it's deck building, and then yeah, you're, you're constantly negotiating, but you're also building your deck in a way that, you know, like I said, so you can solo those contracts, or so you make yourself incredibly useful, like 
um, if you do like a friendly group hug type build where, you know, people are drawing cards from your upgrades, people are getting actions from your upgrades, people can discard cards to draw more cards from your upgrades, they're going to want to work with you and you'll, you'll get a cut of the, you just have to negotiate your cut of the profit and then you, you don't have to negotiate your way into every contract. At that point, people are working to negotiate you out. Um, but yeah, you're, you become a great insurance guy, but just make sure you don't become redundant with someone else. Um, so they're giving, offering a big box to do it all. I, is this transparent for show? That's the one thing I can't tell. Because I I think it's transparent. Oh, this is a piece of plat. Oh, okay. This is actually a storage unit. I see. Okay. So we should back now for the holographic cards. Because this is the only time, if you have the base game already, it's the only time you can get the Titan box. Um without the base game so you can just put the base game into the titan box um you know yeah they've done multiple games like i said including the original moon rankers so they've done it um and yeah so they they have really great stuff like i said i really the only thing i kind of disappointed with is the the little um pieces for the ship part or for the ships themselves uh I, I just, it's from a design perspective um, you know, the plastic is fine. Um, it's solid. Like, it's not, like, cheapo. Uh, and the models are, are detailed. It's just, I don't care for the designs a whole lot. For instance, uh, the orange and yellow are very similar. And then the purple is just really weird. I'm a purple guy. So, I do, it's like a little purse. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's, a, that's just me, at least. Uh, I'd, you know, differ these two and change that but that that's it that's like literally my main complaint with the game um so binding ties is the expansion i'm most excited for uh really because it creates negotiate increases no, negotiation complexity and rewards teamwork i suppose um so you get faction reputation so you draw an objective trash a card whatever so every time you complete a contract with another player, you gain faction rep with that player. Failing contract can result in negative faction rep, so be careful who you trust. That's fun. So there's generally failing contracts always bad, except there is an, an objective card that says fail a contract. You know, so hey, go in aggressively. Go in on purpose as the insurance guy and fail a contract. You know, like there's some things that you can do um, by failing contract, but it looks like this is the first time it's like truly a negative come in here. So I think that that's pretty interesting um oh you can spend faction rep for an extra action to draw a card or even block an entire hazard die that's strong wow okay um that's cool all right you know like so basically, you're going to be seeing a lot more completed contracts now, but at what cost? You know, if you're able to complete it without that stuff, I think that actually creates, there's um, some difficulties in the base game um, where you have to work together. Um, so being able to do this, though, makes it so you can kind of overcome some of these humps a little easier. Um, Interesting. So you don't even have to get the faction by working with the player. That's cool. So you can kind of build it up at first and then, you know, kind of maintain it. My cat's here to say hello. So that's really cool. All right. I'm going to watch the video here. Uh, well, I guess we'll see how long it is. It's a minute long. Uh, why not? One of three new Moonrakers expansions coming to Kickstarter on July 19th. Each of the expansions focuses on enhancing one of the core elements of Moonrakers. For Binding Ties, that's negotiation. To add more depth and incentives to negotiations, we've introduced Faction Reputation. Now, every time you successfully complete a contract with another player, you will gain one reputation with that player on your new Faction Reputation Terminal. Reputation can then be traded in for all kinds of rewards, plus one card or action, blocking a hazard dice in a pinch, you can even save up for an additional prestige point. Wow. Binding Ties also adds 40 new cards to the game that tie in with this system. There are new contracts, objectives, crew, and ship parts that unlock dozens of ways to interact with faction reputation. 
We love binding ties because it brings a lot more structure and strategy to the negotiation aspect of Moonrakers. This means more alliances in the early game and more power and flexibility in the end game. For more info about binding ties and the rest of the All right, so that's binding ties there. I think that's really cool. Um, you know, the, the, I do have to say, I, I do have another complaint with the game. The game pieces are huge. Um, the, the game itself takes up a lot of table space, so I would beware in that regard. Um, and adding the, you know, faction reputation board will only increase that. Uh, so that is something you do have to keep in mind, I guess, is that it does take a lot of space up um, because you need space for playing cards, you need space for, you know, drawing card piles, um, as well as your upgrades and objective cards. Uh, so you have your ship terminal terminals normally, right? And those are, and then now you're adding a, something that's roughly what a third of the length, you know, like square footage right here. So, um, yeah, should be interesting there from a table space perspective, but. I'm still getting it. It's one I'm most excited for. So, yeah, we won't watch the how to play. We won't watch the gameplay video. But let's take a look at Overload here. So, Overload provides major upgrade to the deck building mechanics of Moonrakers. Um, so, it adds new advanced action cards, contract types, and token cults Iospheres. The Overload Overload also doubles the number of ship parts and crews in the game, and can discover new synergies and advanced mechanics. That's cool. So Iospheres have already kind of made a, a peak in Luminor, and basically you like you can expend them to do things, um, and uh, they recharge, I guess. So at least that's how the final boss uses them. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So that would be interesting to see. Uh, so we got two times. You get 20 crew and 37 ship parts. That's awesome. You know that only adds replayability. It only adds interest and. In, um, intrigue and um, yeah <laughs> I've never run out of crew before but yeah there are times where you're like oh it's this sh ship part again because you know when you're playing with four or five people people you know that's 15 ship parts and if there's 37 of them odds are you're going to see at least one of them quite frequently um Seven new action cards. So these are exciting because that's like a plus three thruster. I didn't see what some of the other ones are, but I'm guessing they're kind of amped up. This probably gives you an action. But yeah, so look, there's a lot of game mechanics for them to interact with, which I think is clever. Oh, here, it talks about Oscar. Some of the ship parts... Uh, can use iospheres to track abilities, charging up a powerful action, tracking rain uses, or even recording a uh, a part's du durability. They're missing uh, apostrophe. Are all new way? Are always iospheres are used in new cards? Yep. Uh, like I said, you there's that's clever game design there. Um, head to head contracts are competitions among players to see who can reduce the most of required contract. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's going to be dope. Oh, man. Where? They missed an L here, too, man. Who's their type guy? Type. Uh, copywriter. Um... And all right, so uh, I guess we'll do an introduction. Deck it's only... More combos, more variety. Breakers has two gameplay pillars: deck building and negotiation. Overload is all about enhancing the deck building. More combos, more variety, and more power. The 37 new ship parts and 20 new crew literally really double good. the amount of deck building possibilities in the game. These cards not only give you new options for how to build your deck, but combined with the new advanced action cards, which are basically supercharged action cards, literally double the amount of deck building possibilities in the game. These cards not only give you new options for how to build your deck. Oh, I do want to take a look at the get out of here. All right.
Subtract one additional crew requirement plus one action. That's so good, because that's two crew. Oh, that's so good. What's your deck? Once per contract. I but combined with the new... So, that was, what was the damage one? Plus one action. With the new advanced... So, okay, so basically the color of the plus symbol is affects the bonus here action and cards, then which... if it's an x it gets plus three they're basically supercharged okay. action cards from the base game. it's an additional card all right oh can we see some of these crew here trash an action card from your hand do something with it okay that's cool um flex is a new requirement type that you may play any card to fulfill the second are head-to-head -head contracts, allowing players to compete directly against each other to see who can play the most of the requirements on the contract. We love Overload because it makes all our deck building dreams come true. It adds a ton of new unique card synergies and opens up the door for all kinds of new deck building strategies. For more, remove one Isle Sphere to any, add or remove one Isle Sphere to any of your ship parts, plus one action. Oh, that's cool. Free crew. Slap some Iosphere's down. So the problem with this, though, this one, though, is it, uh, it, it dilutes your deck. So you really have to get a lot out of this Iosphere's. Then there's Nomad. Interesting. So Nomad is really cool, I think. It kind of adds a narrative aspect to your base game already Um, with the navigation board. And then there's also global events. So let's see your ship parts cost one more. Crew cost one less, I guess. I see an S at there. Enhance. Oh, oh, oh. Don't want to do that. Yeah, that's an S. Okay. Um, find Sorelia. Oh, that's so cool. I like I like how they're building up the lore too here. Oh man, that's so cool. Let's take a look at Nomad. Turn, you'll move to a new sector, each controlled by one of the five factions of the Moonrakers. Each faction offers contract options that align with their specialty. For example, if you head to Comec, you'll flip over three reactor-based contracts. If you head to Magnomi, you'll flip over three damage-based contracts. This allows you to build an even more specialized ship, knowing that you'll have consistent access to the contracts you want to attempt. That's However, powerful. you'll need to navigate carefully, as you can only ally with players who are in an adjacent sector. Ooh. Nomad oh, also introduces global events. Events occur every turn and present new challenges, offer rewards, and can even trigger a global vote to enact new policies that change the rules. Oh, that's really cool. We love cool. Nomad because it really gives me oh, a totally new feel. The deck building and negotiation you love are still there, but the new navigation board adds a layer of strategy and intentionality to contract selection and alliances. And the new global events provide even more off-turn interaction and change the rules in really fun ways. That's exciting. For more info about Nomad and the rest of the Titan... I'm very excited for this one, too. I might be more excited for this one than Binding Dies, actually, now. Oh, man, that's really cool. Um, that that's really powerful though because you can essentially guarantee you more solo uh, solo able um ship, which is strong. Um, your ship can now like if you're you know if you're building thrusters and reactors, hey, guess what? You have card drawn actions now. You can just kind of hop between the two. That's always been kind of a strong strategy, Moonrakers. So yeah. And then the big box, it gets you the big box for um, fitting everything inside of it. Um, that's that's nice of them. Room to grow. So this is the original box. It's already quite big. Um, the big box is, if you can't tell, bigger. So exciting. I'm getting all three, if you can't tell. Um, here's just talks about Luminor, and I, I kind of go through it. I Yeah, it's a lot of fun. 
would recommend. Um, this is an expansion that's a crossover with the ga other game, Failed, Veiled Fate. I haven't actually played Veiled Fate, um, although I am interested. So let's take a look at these crew. I, I guess. So every two damage you play this contract can instead reduce another contract requirement by one. That's interesting. Um, plays a reactor, gain one, plus one card for every two reactor cards already played, including this one. Wow. She's good. She, this should be four. <laughs> um, because, you know, you drop her down as your second reactor, or as your fourth reactor, you get a thruster for free. That's good. Um, gain two actions or block two hazard. Wow. Wow. He's, he's really good too. Why is he blue? Oh, okay. He's got a green name, so he's blue background. Trash card in your hand to gain plus three cards. You may instead trash the top card of your deck to also negotiate, negate a hazard deck. Oh, wow. You know, good YOLO. Claw. Draw two objectives, keep one, give one to another player. If you have the least prestige, keep both. Wow, that's he's nice. Go, Klar. Naka plays a thruster, game plus one action for each. If you're confused by some of these, watch my other videos on Moonrakers. I uh, hopefully make a little more sense. Maybe watch Learn to Play. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of geeking out over these. Plays a shield, game plus one for your shield. Oh, wow, he's good too. Especially if you have like um, Dauntless. Um, which lets you play shields as actions. <laughs> Pentha, roll a hazard die, reduce any quant contract by the number of hazard roll on that die, and negate a hazard die. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Sagari plays a damage two plus one action for each damage card already played, including this one. Okay. Gain any action card. Gain. Or trash this card to gain a prestige. Wow. Wow, that's really cool too. You know, you, you buy this early and then, haha, guess what? I'm at nine. Suck it. <laughs> or, you know, you go up, you're going to go up to nine. You already complete the contract requirements, you know, and then slap out the profit. Oh man, no one, no one would ever work with you once you get the profit, though. Oh man, that's so cool. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited for these guys. These are, these are a lot of fun. I'm a little worried that they're a little pushed. Um, like a pony at three, but um, overall the rest are fine, I think. Sagari is really good. Yeah, these are really good though, because they really just help with your economy a lot. And then the negotiation board. Um, so the negotiation board, like I mentioned, it sure it takes up a little more space, but my goodness, it just It's really frustrating when you, you're doing a complex contract and you can't figure out who is getting what. So it's nice to have for sure. Um, so let's look through the pledge levels. So $35, you pick an expansion. Uh, but for $99, you get all three. Moonraker's Platinum Edition is the base game. Uh, so you can just get the base game by itself here. But you know you won't be able to get the big box without the base game. So really, if you're only looking for the base game, you know, you played the TTS mod. This is what to get. And then, um, yeah, here's everything else. Uh, there's the Titan box, which is empty. Um, and then this gets you both things here for $180. So I'm, I'm buying the Titan box here. I already have the base game. A lot of fun. Uh, so I'm also getting negotiation board. I'm getting the endless. I have the shard already. I think I paid ten dollars for the shard. Um, also comes with the sleeves for it. Uh, if you want to get the sleeves, I should be getting the gold Maro Maro Mata already, um, as well as the hollow pack. It does include that part. It's not including that free part for me here uh, for forty or er, our rewards. Extra hazard dice. You don't really need this, honestly. One time I accidentally deleted the dice in TTS. We just used normal D6s. 1s and 2s meant no hazard. 3s, 4s meant one hazard. And 5s, 6s meant two hazards. 
Um, pin, it's just kind of cosmetic stuff here. Pin packs, stickers, or no, I think there's pin packs. And then extra coins. Again, you don't need them. It says here you don't need them. I'd love to get these if just to upgrade my game, but $30 is not worth, I don't think. And I'm a sucker for metal parts. Like I'll, I'll buy a steel steel book pre-order for a video game for twenty dollars more just to get the steel book. So like three five pieces for thirty bucks, six dollars a, a token. Just give me a purple one. You know, I'll pay six dollars for the purple one. Why not? But um, like I said, not a huge fan of design. Purple and blue, kind of lame designs. Purple especially, yellow and orange, a little too similar. Um, you can get metal, other metal pieces. Neoprene mats, I don't have these. I actually don't have sleeves either. You don't really need them. They're, they're nice cards. You know, just don't be greasy, and you'll be fine. Uh, and then you can get the other games, I guess. So, cool stuff. Check it out. Uh, this is way too long video, um, but like I said, you can play the game on TTS and uh, check out the Kickstarter.